Hi folks, HR Funk here. You don't have to have been a viewer of my videos for very long to know that I am a lifelong 1911 fan, going all the way back to my time in the Marine Corps back during the 1980s when the 1911A1 was still the standard issue service pistol, and that's what I was issued nearly every day as an MP in the Marine Corps. And what I have with me today is the newest addition to my firearm collection and my 1911 collection, and this is a pistol that has been eluding me for over a year. I have been looking for one of these. It is a Springfield Armory Ronin operator with a four and a quarter inch barrel chambered for the nine millimeter Luger cartridge. Now, before anyone starts yelling at me and telling me that's an unholy union and it's tantamount to crossing a duck with a groundhog and coming up with a platypus, let me tell you, I specifically wanted to get the 1911 in nine millimeter and the nine millimeter Ronin specifically so that I could try it in this video. And I'm going to explain the reasons why I thought maybe this isn't such a bad combination after all. Now, before I get into the details covering the Ronin operator that I have with me here today, let me tell you generally Springfield Armory offers the Ronin in several different variations. And this is the one I wanted to get. And this is the one that I couldn't find. I could find the full size versions chambered for 45 ACP and 10 millimeter. And I could find, or I at least found one of the enhanced micro pistols, which is even smaller than this one chambered for the nine millimeter cartridge, but I could not find the commander size four and a quarter inch chambered for the nine millimeter cartridge anywhere, as I said, for well over a year. And the reason I was looking at getting this particular handgun was because it has some features and some qualities that I think make it a great fall and spring carry firearm. So how's that for accessorizing for the time of the year? During the fall and spring, here where I live, people don't wear quite such heavy clothing, so I don't feel like I really need the oomph of the 45 ACP to get through heavy clothing and not have to worry about the hollow points stuffing up and clogging and all of that type of thing in order to have an effective wound should I need to use this for defensive purposes. And this has a lightweight aluminum alloy frame making it easy to carry, but with the lighter recoiling nine millimeter cartridge, I thought that seemed like a pretty good idea. So as I said, I really wanted to try one of these out and I have quite a few different 1911 pistols and a lot of them are chambered for the 45 ACP. I've got a 10 millimeter, I've got a 38 super, but I've never even fired a 1911 chambered for the nine millimeter cartridge before. So I was curious about that and what the experience would be like. So I'm going to give you a close up look at this Ronin operator. Then we're gonna head off to the range and I promise you, we're gonna see how it shoots. With the Ronin series, Springfield Armory attempted to put a lot of features into this pistol while simultaneously keeping the price at a point lower than a lot of competitive options. Now, I would not consider the Ronins a budget 1911. They are more expensive than a lot of the imports, but they're also not as expensive as some other options from different factories or some other options even from Springfield Armory. And in order to do that, Springfield Armory did take some cost cutting measures and I'll point some things out as I review this pistol and tell you where I can see that they tried to cut some corners and keep the cost down. But overall, this is a very good looking pistol. And I've said before, I am a sucker for two-tone pistols. I love the way this looks. Some people don't like this, but I am one of the people that do. And I'm gonna flip this around and give you a look at the other side. And there's a look at the port side of the Ronin operator. And this pistol is marked Ronin Operator. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that on your screen or not, but that's a marking that Springfield Armory has since changed. And this is probably a good time to tell you in the video that this is not a brand new pistol. I ran across this in a used pistol case. And since I've been looking for a new one for over a year and couldn't find one, I snapped up the used version. Now I will tell you it is lightly used and you'll see as we go through that there are really not much in the way of handling marks or anything else on this pistol, but it is not brand new. It has been fired previously, but not fired a lot, which is another thing that will become apparent when we start to look more closely at this handgun. And there's a close up look at the slide marking. Hopefully now you can see it is marked Ronin Operator, which while it does nothing as far as functionality is concerned, I think it's kind of cool. I prefer that marking. Apparently Springfield Armory has decided their operator series all has an equipment rail. And since this lacks that feature, they've taken away the operator from the title of the pistol. And nowadays they are just marked Ronin. And in case anyone's curious, Ronin, 
was the name of wandering samurai in feudal Japan, which I also think is pretty cool. And as we look here at this view, I don't know if you can see it from this angle, but the one mark from the previous operator is a scratch on the slide right here that apparently came about when the slide stop was being reinstalled. So that's the one blemish you will notice, but I didn't put it there. And starting my look at the features of the Ronin operator from the top and working my way down, I'll start with the sights and you can see the front sight is a fiber optic post and the rear sight has a white dot on either side. It's also serrated to keep down glare. The rear sight, thank goodness, has the tactical shelf in case you need to cycle the slide one-handed while your other hand is disabled or otherwise occupied. The top of the slide has a matte finish to keep down glare while you're shooting, prevent that from causing any problem with your sighting. The slide has rear cocking serrations. It does not have front cocking serrations, which I prefer. I don't use the front serrations and I just like the looks of the slide better when they're not present. As you can see, the side of the slide, if I can keep it focused, is polished and nicely blued. And I also prefer that. A lot of people these days want just the flat black slide or flat black handgun, maybe I should say. But I like the polished sides and I'm not worried about that glare giving away my position or anything like that. The Ronin pistols from Springfield Armory have hammer forged match grade barrels. And this one is a four and a quarter inch barrel since this is a commander size handgun. You can see the ejection port is lowered and flared. Turning our attention to the rear of the pistol, you can see the skeletonized commander style hammer. And also, as you can see there, this pistol has an internal extractor. One other feature of the barrel you can see here is a loaded chamber window. If you have a cartridge in the chamber, you can see the brass rim through this small opening. Now I've mentioned before, this works okay in good light, but in adverse lighting, this is not a very good system. So this is not something I would rely on. You need to make sure you check your chamber. If you're not certain whether or not it's loaded, I would not rely on that little window. You can see here, the Ronin operator has the upswept beaver tail style grip safety with the raised surface at the bottom. And I'll talk about this a little bit later. This is intended to help ensure that the grip safety is properly disengaged, but I've run into a little bit of an issue involving the thumb safety that I'll talk about momentarily. The mainspring housing is nicely checkered, and someone was curious as to whether or not this was a steel mainspring housing or a plastic mainspring housing, and I will demonstrate momentarily the answer to that question. With my cheap refrigerator magnet, I will hold it up next to the mainspring housing, and you can see that is a steel mainspring housing. It is not plastic. I very much like the grips on the Ronin operator, and the rest of the Ronin line has these same grips. They are thinner than you typically see with 1911 style pistols, and also the bushings holding the grip screws are thinner. So it allows for a thinner overall profile for the grip and it feels good in the hand. You can tell that that is slimmer than you typically have with many 1911 style pistols and it just feels like you can get a really good hold on the Ronin. The front strap is not textured, checkered, or grooved or any other way enhanced in order to aid with your grip. But we do have checkering on these grips and the check ring on the mainspring housing so the pistol feels secure in your hand. It doesn't feel like it's gonna come out of there. And as long as I'm talking about the grip frame, we'll see one of the first places here that Springfield Armory did not try to enhance this design and probably save themselves a little bit of money on machining costs. There is no cut up underneath the rear of the trigger guard there. That's just standard 1911 contour. So that's the first place that I'll point out where I think they tried to use a little bit of a cost-cutting measure. And the next place where Springfield Armory tried to save some money was with the trigger. It's probably 
not easy for you to see, but this is a plastic trigger. Now, obviously the internal portion is steel, but the external portion you see here is plastic. It is a non-adjustable trigger, so there's no over-travel adjustment. And I've got to say, as 1911 triggers go, this is not the best one that I've ever felt. There's a little bit of creep and it's a little on the heavy side. It's not bad, it's perfectly serviceable, but as I said, it is not the best 1911 trigger that I've ever felt in my life. Turning my attention to the thumb safety, this is one of the best thumb safeties that I have ever felt. It is very positive, it moves easily. You can hear how positive that engagement and disengagement is. I very much like the movement and the feel of that thumb safety. The size and the contour, however, is, as you can see, somewhat larger and more extended than the GI style safety. And what I noticed, and I alluded to this a moment ago, is if I hold my thumb on top of the safety, as many shooters do with the 1911, I am not able, and I am trying to, there I got it finally, I am not able to engage the grip safety to the point that I can fire the pistol. So this is one of those places where I've talked about before in my videos that I go back to my traditional grip that I was taught in the Marine Corps, my thumb over thumb grip, and that works just fine with this pistol. But if you have very large hands, you might not have that issue. I don't have small hands, and it's just something, as I said, that I noticed very early on by resting my thumb on top of there. And I got just enough of it that time that it dropped but it's definitely not something that happens every time that I try to fire the pistol. And by the way, this is a non-ambidextrous safety that you can see there, which I also prefer. When you start to get these levers on both sides, the pistol starts to get very wide in this area. And the other thing I notice is when I'm trying to disengage the thumb safety, the lever on this side sometimes is pushing down against my trigger finger and I just don't care for the ambi safety on a 1911. So I do much prefer that aspect of the thumb safety. There's a look at the grooved slide stop on the Ronin operator. And you can see this is a GI style slide stop. It is not extended. I also prefer this arrangement. When some pistols have an extended slide stop and also an extended grip safety, this starts to get very crowded in this area and I just don't care for it. I much prefer this arrangement. Moving down slightly, we can also see the magazine catch is grooved give your thumb a little bit more traction when releasing the magazine. The magazine well is beveled to assist with magazine insertion. I am not going to disassemble the Ronin operator because YouTube, I think lately, has been training new employees on how to demonetize videos by using my videos for the example. <laughs> so I'm not going to give them any excuse with this one by trying to disassemble this pistol, but there are a million videos out there demonstrating disassembly and reassembly of the 1911. So I'm not going to do it in this video. I will tell you about some of the internals, however, beginning with the fact that this pistol, one of the things that I really, really like about it is it has a traditional recoil system. You see there is no guide rod of any sort protruding from underneath the barrel, and I much prefer this. I really think the only thing full length guide rods do is add complexity to the disassembly and reassembly of the pistol. They add cost to the pistol and they add a little bit of weight. I do not care for full length guide rods and this pistol doesn't have one. Hopefully through the ejection port there you can see this is a fully ramped barrel. Also through the ejection port we can see the ejector. And this is another place where Springfield Armory tried to save some money. This is a MIM part, it is not machined steel, which is another thing that I noticed when I disassembled the pistol after I brought it home. And also, the sear in this pistol is supposed to be a MIM part, although I have not disassembled it to that point to be able to confirm that. Another place where Springfield Armory tried to keep the price of this pistol down was with the magazine. When you purchase the Ronin pistol brand new, it comes with only one magazine. And a lot of you know that's one of my pet peeves with firearms manufacturers. It drives me crazy when they only include one magazine with their firearm. Now, the one good thing about my purchasing this pistol used is it came with a second magazine. This is a 
Vickers Tactical Magazine made by Wilson Combat. So at least I have two magazines with this particular handgun. And that's good because purchasing additional magazines from Springfield Armory as 1911 magazines go is somewhat expensive. These are in the $45, $50, $55 range. And usually you can get 1911 magazines for much less than that. But they are fairly expensive if you get them from Springfield Armory. The aluminum frame versions of the Ronin pistols, like my operator here, have a frame that is made of forged aluminum, so this is not cast, and it's also finished with a silver Cerakote. So this looks like stainless steel, but it is lightweight aluminum alloy, and it has that Cerakote finish. So again, I really like the way that two-tone pistol looks. Okay, it's time to find out where this trigger in my Ronin operator is breaking. As I said before, this is not the best 1911 trigger I've ever felt in my life. My guess is it's going to break between 5.5 and, and 6 pounds, but we shall see. Five pounds, 9.8 ounces. So pretty good guess on where that was going to break. I'll try it again. and see if it stays just about at that same weight. I think it's going to. The trigger does feel fairly consistent. Five pounds, 5.4 ounces, a little bit lighter. So I'll try one more pull. And a little bit lighter that time, 5 pounds, 3.7 ounces, for an average of 5 pounds, 6.3 ounces. So a little below 5.5 pounds. Again, it's not bad. It is a serviceable trigger. It's just not as good as some other 1911s that I've handled and fired over the years. Well, one thing I did forget to mention when I was talking about the trigger earlier, even though it's a plastic trigger, it does have... A grooved surface to help grip your finger a little bit better when you're shooting. Let's take a look at the weight of the Ronin. Springfield Armory rates it at 31 ounces unloaded and with the magazine in place on my scale it's coming in at just under that 30.6 ounces so we could round it up to 31 ounces so the weight looks pretty much right where Springfield rated it. And with a fully loaded magazine and one round in the chamber, the weight is coming in at 34.9 ounces. Actually, it just went up to 35. It seems to be going back and forth between that one-tenth of an ounce. But I've been carrying this pistol for the last couple of days, and this is a nine-round magazine. I don't think I mentioned that before. But it's a very comfortable pistol to carry. It's very easy. It does not feel excessively heavy. And the slim lines of the 1911 also as anyone who's ever carried one knows, make it very agreeable to carry on any kind of a waistband configuration. So that's going to do it for the up-close look at the Ronin Operator. Now let's talk about the way it shoots. A couple of days ago, I headed out to the range. Now I have to tell you a little bit about the conditions I was shooting in at the range on this particular day, because this was the coldest temperatures that I've shot in since last winter. When I got out to the range, the air temperature was about 22 and there was a stiff breeze blowing. So the wind chill was down in the mid-teens, I believe it was 15 exactly for wind chill factor that day, and it was cold. So when I got out there, I wanted to set up, get my shooting done, and get back in where it was warm. So keep that in mind as you're watching me shoot my way through the various things in the video that I might not have been doing my absolute best shooting. Under better conditions on a nice sunny day, they might have been better as far as my accuracy that I was getting in the different drills than what you're about to see. In any case, when I first got out to the range, as usual, I wanted to do a rested accuracy test, and the bench was already set up at a distance of 15 yards, and I was not going to take the time to move it. So after brushing the snow off of my bench and setting up my sandbags and my cameras, I fired out a five-shot rested group from that distance of 15 yards, and here's what it looked like.
And here's that 15 yard target. And this is not the greatest accuracy I have ever seen from a handgun from that distance of 15 yards. If I'd stopped after my first three shots, that wasn't too bad. That was three nicely centered shots that were right at two inches center to center. And again, I remind everyone that my hands are cold, my fingers are cold, everything else is cold. So after these first three shots, and I started to shoot these higher shots that could have been me, not necessarily the pistol. As things ended up, I had a three and a half inch group, which from 15 yards is not great. It's not whore awful. It would be acceptable for defensive purposes, but I would just like to have seen a little bit better accuracy out of that match grade barrel. Now my ammunition was also nothing special. This was plain old 115 grain blazer brass. So with a different ammunition, I might have also seen some better accuracy results. But that was what I ended up with from that distance of 15 yards for my first five shots fired from the bench. Next, it was time to move on to some more defensive oriented drills. So I set up at a distance of five yards and from that distance, I fired some controlled pairs. And here's how that went. And I've marked my shots from those controlled pairs with the black stickers and everything looked good on those drills. I've got two good heart shots and I've got four good lung shots. So no problem whatsoever keeping those center of chest. And as you saw, I was not using my shot timer because I just was not gonna take the time to get it out. <laughs> uh, but I was shooting those as quickly as I could come up and get a good sight picture and squeeze off accurate shots. So no problem whatsoever with those controlled pairs from that distance of five yards. Next, I moved back to a distance of seven yards, and from that distance, I was shooting failure drills, which is two shots to the body and one shot to the head in rapid succession, and here's how they went. And I now have those failure drill shots marked with the red stickers. And once again, no problem at all with the body shots. I've got three good heart shots there, three good lung shots. So everything in the body was looking good. When I came up to the head, they're not bad, but I did notice my shots are hitting a little bit high. Now these are all in the brain, so they're not going to be too bad, but they're just a little bit higher than I would have preferred them. Now this could be me based on the conditions I was shooting in that day. It could be maybe that 115 grain blazer brass just prints a little bit higher out of the Ronin than some other ammunition might. So an ammunition change might bring it down just a little bit. But I did just notice that I was hitting a little bit higher there than I would have preferred to. In any case, it was now time to move back a little bit farther. So for my next drill, I went back to a distance of 15 yards. And from there, I started in a low ready position and came up and fired five shots in a row into the body of the target. And here's what that looked like. And I used yellow stickers for my 15 yard shots. Hopefully you're able to see those okay. Sometimes the yellow doesn't stand out real well on the white target. But I've got a group that is not bad at all from that distance of 15 yards, especially as fast as I was shooting. I shot those five shots in about five seconds. And I have a group that uh, overall is probably three and a half inches or so, maybe four inches. And all of it pretty well centered on that right lung so no problem other than I'm pulling them a little bit to the left. And I think that was probably just me that particular time around. But again, not a bad group. And the pistol is very controllable. One of the things I noticed, not surprisingly, since it's a nine millimeter, is it's a very soft shooting 1911. So no problem as I come back out of recoil and back down on target, squeezing off the next shot and firing off five shots in five seconds and getting a pretty decent group. After this, I moved back to a distance of 25 yards, and from 25 yards, again, I fired five more shots, and here's what they looked like.
and those 25 yard shots are marked with the green stickers. And I have a confession to make on this 25 yard shooting. After I finished my 15 yard shooting, I was concerned that this group might have been off to the left because of the sights. I thought maybe that rear sight was a little bit too far to the left. So when I got to 25 yards, I decided to move my point of aim to the, I was going to say the right lung, what was actually the left lung in the target here, in order to compensate for what I thought was going to be a sight correction. And my first two shots basically went right into that left lung. <laughs> so I could see that with the way the, the sun was shining on the target. And by the way, I apologize for all the shadows and the lighting in the video out at the range. This time of the year, the sun is very low in the sky and it's basically coming from my back when I'm out at the range and that's why I'm getting that strange lighting. But because of that, I was able to see the target very well and I could see these first two shots that were hitting basically right where I was aiming from that distance of 25 yards. So I brought my point of aim back to the center of the target and from there I fired these three shots here. So I had one that's a little bit low and to the left, these two that are pretty well centered. So I don't think that was the rear sight for these shots from 15 yards that were off to the left. I think that was just me because from the even greater distance of 25 yards, the shots were going basically right to my point of aim, albeit just a little bit high. So I was still getting that deviation, but overall not difficult at all to keep those shots on the center chest area of the target from that distance of 25 yards. So at this point, I came back up to a distance of seven yards. And what I wanted to do was test out the two magazines that came with my Ronin pistol with my carry ammunition, which is 124 grain gold dot plus P. And for that drill, I decided to use a multiple target drill. So I have two targets this time. And when I begin the drill, I'm starting in the low ready position. And then I come up and fire one target at, or one shot rather at the target on the right then three shots to target on the left, and then two more shots to target on the right, all in rapid succession. So I'm still testing the handling characteristics of that pistol and seeing how quickly I can make target transitions and get shots on target. And I'm also testing it with my carry ammunition. And since I had two magazines that I'm going to be using with that pistol, I tested both of them. So for that reason, I conducted the drill twice, once with each magazine. And here's how it went. And I was pretty happy with that first run on the failure drill with the Springfield Armory magazine. My first shot and my fifth shot were both basically touching on the aorta. And the other shot on this target is just slightly low, just below the heart right here, catching the lung on the left side, left lung. These were three good lung shots on my target on the left. So everything was looking good that first time through. So I tried it again, this time using the Wilson Combat Magazine, and here's what the second run looked like. And the shots for my second run on the multiple adversary drill, and by the way, this is a multiple adversary drill. I misspoke in the last segment and called it a failure drill. But the shots from my second run on the multiple adversary drill are marked with the light blue stickers, and I'm running out of colors. <laughs> and I've got three shots here. On target number one, I had one shot go a little bit high and I've got two good lung shots. So not bad, definitely effective shots. This one's a little bit higher than I would like, but I still would not want to get shot there if I was that person. I've got a nice three shot group on target number two here. I've got an aorta shot, a heart, or excuse me, a lung, and looks like clipping the spine with that shot and a good lung shot there. So three good shots on target number two. So the controllability and the sights and everything with the Ronin operator are working well for me on these drills and I'm not having any problem keeping those shots on target. So now I wanted to switch gears just a little bit and try something different. And the reason I'm doing this is because I've only got those two nine millimeter magazines that I just tested, but I do have some 38 Super 1911 magazines. So I wanted to see if my 38 Super 1911 magazines would run 9mm ammunition in the Ronin operator. And I loaded up three magazines. I had two Mech Gars and I also had a Chip McCormick Shooting Star magazine. And I tried all three of them for functioning and here's how that function test went. First up is the Chip McCormick Shooting Star magazine. Let's see how it does.
No problem with that one. Next is a Mechgar 38 Super. That one ran fine. And one more Mechgar. And that ran fine. So no problem with those 38 Super magazines in the Ronin shooting the 9mm ammunition. So that's nice to know. I've got some range magazines to use. Okay, so the Ronin operator ran all three of those 38 Super magazines with no problem. Now I was still using that 115 grain Blazer brass ammo, so I was running ball ammo through, and I would not use those magazines as carry magazines. But for range use, just for practice, I don't have any problem at all running those through. And it worked just fine, so that was great. At this point, there was only one thing left to find out, folks, and that was whether or not the Ronin operator is a 20-foot tack driver. So I put a tack in the target, I loaded up three rounds in the pistol, and I backed off to that distance of 20 feet, and here's how it went. A little high, I'm gonna to have to hold a little bit lower. I was holding six o'clock on the tack to start with. So a little bit lower this time. Elevation was good and the windage was off. <laughs> have one more try to see if it's a tack driver. No! <laughs> the Ronin operator from Springfield Armory is not going to be a tack driver, at least not out here in 22 degree weather or whatever it is today. So no, the Ronin operator was not a tack driver, but in all fairness, folks, I've really got to take this pistol back out on a better day, a warmer day, and redo these accuracy tests because it is entirely possible on a better day with better conditions, the pistol might have been a tack driver and it might have done better on some of those other accuracy tests as well. In the end, I'm pretty happy with my Ronin operator. It is certainly accurate enough to be able to use for defensive applications. It also was 100% reliable with all the ammunition that I ran through and I put about 70 rounds through it when I was out there under those adverse weather conditions, running it with magazines that aren't even intended for the 9mm cartridge, and it ran without any problem whatsoever. The only thing I did before I went out to the range was just a quick cleaning and a proper lubrication, and the pistol ran without a problem. I think I'm going to be very happy with this as my fall and spring carry pistol. It is a lightweight package. It's compact in the Commander format. It has all of the handling and pointing characteristics that make the 1911 such a great, great handgun. It is, as I said, 100% reliable. The trigger is serviceable. It's not a tremendous trigger, but it's not bad. It's just a sort of middle of the road trigger. And I think for defensive use, this pistol is going to be just fine. I can't wait to start carrying it. And that's going to do it for the video today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, as always, make sure you forward those to me. Remember, if you purchase anything from Optics Planet, be sure to use my discount code, which is... And if you use that discount code, it's good for 5% off your purchase from Optics Planet. Also remember the new discount code from Hot Munitions. If you go to Hot Munitions, you can use my discount code there, which is HRFUNK10, and that'll save you 10% off your purchase from Hot Munitions. See you next time, folks. Until then, stay warm and good shooting. Bye-bye.